What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the Call Game Recap. Listen, there's a lot of stuff to talk about today, so I'm going to hop right into it after you leave a like. Okay, let's talk about the Knicks to start off, man. 4C New York Knicks, one game over 500. Somebody asked me on Twitter, Kenny, why are we talking so highly on the New York Knicks with them just being one game over 500, but talking bad about some of the other teams with similar records? And the real answer is expectations. The Knicks were not expected to be a competent, good team this season. They just weren't. And the teams that we are also talking about that have similar records were supposed to be title contenders. So, yes, we're going to say great things about the Knicks right now. And we might say bad things about the other team because they're lower than what we expected. And the Knicks are better than what we expected. We do that. Getting Tom Thibodeau onto this team was going to raise their defensive ceiling. I didn't expect it to be a top five, top three defense in the entire league. And since the Derrick Rose trade... The offense is coming around, too. Let's keep it a buck. If you watch any Knicks games, you know that um, Alfred Payton just really ain't that. And now that Derrick Rose in the starting lineup because Alfred Payton is out, it's just working way too more fluid, way more fluently. And I, I can't see a world where Alfred Payton comes back from his injury and, and Tom Thibodeau's like, D-Rose, you're going back to the bench because D-Rose been out here hooping, even on Twitter, saying on phone him. Come on, man. You can take the man out of Chicago. You can't take the Chicago out of the man. I'm just happy for Knicks fans. The worst thing about them being competent and good this season is that the fans can't really enjoy it because they can't go into the Garden. I've been to the Garden two times in my life in the same week, and this was when the Knicks were really, really bad. And it was filled. It was loud. It didn't matter. Now, I can't imagine how great it would be now that the team is good. Um, Tom Thibodeau has been so, so great. Today was very confusing to me, though. But then again, I remember that it is Tom Thibodeau. They're up by 20 um, with five minutes left. And Julius Randle and them are still out on the court. And it just brought back, like, Vietnam flashbacks for me. You know, if you know, you know. But I want to I want to talk about Julius Randle specifically right now because well the this is this is a question I wanted to pose to you guys and I'm going to pose to my my podcast co-host because I think it's a very interesting question about when a narrative changes. I may have asked y'all this question before, but like Julius Randle's narrative as an NBA player has significantly changed. Now, now I guess narrative is the wrong word because if you watched New York Knicks, Knicks games last season, you know he was a black hole. And he, nobody expected this man to turn up to be an all-star. And, and this is what I want everybody walking away from this video to learn because this is something I'm learning as well. It is okay to be wrong when you learned from what you were wrong. I was completely wrong about Julius Randle as a basketball player. What I learned is if a, a player is 25 years old, let's not just put a ceiling on him. Right. Because what I saw last year when they brought him to New York was him as a black hole, spinning all over the place, turning the ball over, trying to be a point guard and not really being that. And this year, some of the same things he was doing last year, he's more efficient at. He's turning the ball over a little bit, at least the volume of it a little bit less. His playmaking has got better. His shooting has got better. And I forget that this man is only 26 years old. He's one of those players that feels like he's about 30. It just does. Maybe because it's been on three to four teams at this point. And the last year, he just it felt like it was he was done. So what I learned is to not put a cap on these younger players, bro. Not to. So you think about the, the I think what the best thing about the Knicks grind right now, them being over 500, if, is other than RJ, who's playing really, really good, Emmanuel Quickly, um, Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson, the rest of the team is like just guys, right? So their core can continue to get better. Knicks might end up being a free agent destination, and you still got, man, hey, quit playing, bro. Knicks fans should be excited, and I don't know how much of this do I expect to continue second half of the season, but listen, I, I'm excited for them because there's been too many years where they were just like bottom of the conference or close to that. It's a lot of turmoil. You, um, Dolan hasn't said a thing all season long, and I'm like, what? This man ain't never shut his mouth for this long, and the Knicks are good because of it. It's just cool. It's just cool. All right, let's get into, like, individual games because, again, they went against the, the Pistons, and that wasn't really that much of a good game. But shout-out to Julius Randle. Derrick Rose quickly still doing pretty solid things. Let's get to the other games of the day. Starting off with the first one, the the uh, matinee of them all, the Clippers losing to the Bucks, And, well, Giannis, here comes that man. Like, he is a very far choice for MVP. It's not going to happen. Not after two in a row. This man – the, the voters will not give him a third MVP. He could be average six, averaging 60 right now. It just won't happen. Um, it's going to be the same thing. Let's, let me see you do it in the playoffs before you, we get you more love. But this male is completely dominant today. Literally took over the game. Um, and, and some of the things you saw from the Clippers, which is so funny because I think that um, Twitter is a very weird place um, because Paul George was amazing all season long until maybe the last week and a half when he's coming back from his injury. And now people are back on Twitter clowning him like he wasn't just coming off an injury. And before that, he was like 50-50-90 club, whatever. Um, they had this period of time in the last couple minutes of this game where they could not do anything. And it reminded me of, of that playoff run. 
or the playoff drought were were under Doc Rivers, it was so stagnant. It was like, I'm just going to force up some bad shots. And because I'm Paul George, because I'm Kawhi Leonard, some of them will fall, and they didn't. Drew Holiday did not have a great statistical season, but him being back on the defensive floor, you really saw that impact late in that game. And like I mentioned, Giannis, amazing, amazing game. Amazing, amazing game. Next game is also really good down to the wire. Celtics versus Wizards. Now, I've seen, I've seen some Wizard fans, as I mentioned, like, Kenny, you never drop a recap on the days that we win. And my apologies for that. Um, but I, I am still very, very pro fire Scott Brooks. Even after the success over the last 10 or so games, I just need that man out of here because his last minute of this game was dreadful. And if I was a fan of this team, I'd be hot at the way this all ended. Um, Because I, I listened to the Celtics cast on this, which is weird because I don't really like the Celtics announcers. No disrespect to Brian Scalabrini. But what he was saying there's a point in time where the Celtics had no timeouts. They were down by three. And he was like, yeah, I expect to watch the Wizards to, to commit a foul here, send somebody to the free throw line, and you still have ball and up by one. They didn't do that, right? And then they inbound the ball of Bradley Beal. He steps on the, the line. You know, the things like that happen. But they had an opportunity to use that last timeout. And then they do. Uh, Jason Tatum comes back and scores. Shout out to Jason Tatum because he was very clutch at the end of this as well. And then then uh, Scott Brooks ran the same exact sideline out of bounds play that he always run to try to get Bradley Beal a bucket. And, well, Brad Stevens and company, they were ready for it. They brought the double team, got him into the place you want him to be, and he had to force up a shot. Um, but but the Bradley Beal, I think it's 11 straight games where when he scores 40 or more, they lose. <laughs> 40 or more. And I was excited for this one. I was excited to talk about this one when they would potentially want it because there was moments in this game, especially down the stretch, where Russell Westbrook had big-time moments. A um, couple of turnovers over over, the, over that stretch, but big-time moments for him. I was excited to talk about them positively, and I'll probably still will as soon as Scott Brooks is out of there. Um, Daniel Tice, Kimber Walker, Jason Tatum, all big games with Jalen Brown being now. You needed that one. And they got it. Next game we're moving on to is not a game. I did not watch Heat versus Hawks, but he got a win without Jimmy Butler, so that's encouraging. And a game when John Collins put up 34 and 10. I got to see how he did that. Okay. Okay, okay. This was one of those days where, like, if it was looking like it was going to be a blowout, I wasn't going to watch more than the first quarter. Same thing happened with the Lakers versus the, the Warriors today. I didn't watch more than that first quarter. Somebody's like, Kenny, I better hear you talk about the, the elbow or shoulder or something. And I had no idea what he was referencing until later on I saw it on Twitter. I don't know. I don't, I don't have anything to say about that. A game that I did not turn or I turned off and tuned back into was this Memphis Grizzly versus Houston Rockets game and I had told myself I had told the audience here like I haven't watched many Houston Rockets games since the James Harden trade my fault especially since Christian Wood has been out ah today was one of those days of, like I'm gonna watch them well well this team if you did not know I'm gonna this team shot four for 45 from three-pointer today this team had 24 turnovers and 23 made field goals today. That is insanity. It is crazy, 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 bro. And it's, it's too early to overreact to some of the things, but I can't help. But the, the today I was watching this game, and I'm like, man, can you imagine if they would have pulled the Penn Simmons trade off instead of being greedy and trying to get Tyrese Maxey too? Can you imagine how different it could be, especially with Ben Simmons turning up right now? And then the, the Victor Oladipo situation is so weird to me because they trade for him. They they send Jared Allen and, and Karis Avert to different places when they could have been on his team and being helpful because they wanted to stay relatively small and let Christian Wood be the only real center on the roster. They started Justin Patton, bro. Justin Patton ain't played an NBA, like a real life NBA game until like three weeks or like two weeks ago. For real. He scored against the Bulls and they were like, man, um, that's his first NBA bucket. The man was drafted three years ago. So, like, they sent these pieces other other places, and then they brought back Victor Oladipo, who don't want to be there. Unless you get in the mother load of, of assets for him, why wouldn't you just take Karras? Why wouldn't you just take Jared? I don't understand it, bro. And I'm telling you, they're not getting a mother load of assets for Victor Oladipo because Wedge just don't seem like he, he has his eye on one specific spot, and we know what that spot is, me and you. And he's not signing an extension to anybody else. So who's about to really give you some assets for that? I, I don't know. Devin Booker, big time win. Devin Booker took over this third quarter, and it was a beauty to watch. This is the second game in a row I watched of DeAndre Aiden where he had periods of looking dominant. If DeAndre Aiden is starting to put it together at this this extent, boy, it's, it's a bit trouble. Devin Booker, I think he had 20-plus points in the fourth quarter, in the third quarter alone. 
put it out of reach because um, the Timberwolves are kind of hanging on through the first half. D-Book said none of that. Next game and the very last game of the day um, might have been the best one, bro. Um, st- uh, Luke Walton, it was my tweet. Luke Walton is done. He's over with. It's a wrap. This team just went on like a nine-game losing streak the other day. They get a win, cool, and then they end up losing again today in a game where they should actually win. Now, um, the reason I say they should actually win because they were up by like six with um with, a, with like 50 seconds left or something. Now, I'm not blaming Luke Walton because Marvin Bagley missed two free throws um, and, and Buddy Hill missed a free They missed a lot of free throws down the stretch. I think it was like five in a row at one point. Um, I'm not blaming him for that, but it's, it's hard to look at this team and, and his success or lack of success over the past year or so since he's got the job and be like, yeah, he's safe. Team is just on an eight-game losing streak. They lost nine out of the last ten. It's hard for me to look at this team and this roster and be like, this is where they should be. They should be better than this. You know, they, they get no bench production, especially with, with Tyree sitting on the side last suited up. I see you, Reese, kind of fresh. Um, there, there's no reason for them to to be as bad as they were, especially with just three weeks ago. They were like six and one and seven. I do, like the, the ups and downs, the valleys and, and, and highs of this team are crazy. Let's talk about the Charlotte Hornets, though. P.J. Washington dropped 42 tonight. 42. I had to go back to look at like, okay, this is his first 40 point game. But other than this, what was his career high? His real career high, y'all, was his first NBA game. That was against the Bulls. I remember him tearing us up in his first game of his career. Him and Larry Marketing were going head to head. And he ain't scored that much since that day. 27 of what it was in his first NBA game. And today he dropped 42. Malik Monk was getting DMP's coach's decision um, a a couple weeks ago. And I know a lot of it had to do with the the substance, um, substance, whatever it was for the NBA. I'm guessing James Bray goes like, no, you don't get PT. You got to earn it, which which I respect. But since this man has been back in the lineup, he has been electric. And we've talked about this before. Um, basically, when he was getting the DMPs, I'm like, yeah, if you want to win basketball games, you want to put a little bit more offense on the floor. Malik Monk has to be out there because he will have these games or, yeah, he will shoot you out of some games. It's a fact. But when he is when he is on, he is J.R. Smith light. He is Jordan Clarkson light. These these microwave Lou Williams light. There's a there's a mold. Jamal Crawford, there's a mode of player, and Malik Monk is that guy. Miles Bridges continues to be one of my favorite role players in the league. This man started every single game last season. This year, he's been so um, so selfless to be like, I'll come off the bench. I'll do a lot of the dirty work. I'll hit some shots, and he's a lefty, which I really, really like. Terry Rozier could have hit a shot the whole game. He hit a three, then hit three big free throws after drawing a foul. LaMelo continues to look like a floor general at the age of 19 years old. What a game. What a what a game. Um, Harrison Barnes was was putting people in the post. And there was a time, especially late in this game, where the Charlotte Hornets were running super small with P.J. Washington as a center. And P.J. Washington is, what, 6'7". And then the Sacramento Kings were running big. They had Harrison Barnes, who's 6'8". They had Marvin Bagley, who's like 6'10", 6'11". And they had Rashawn Holmes. And I was thinking, like, okay, this team better dominate that glass. They did dominate the glass in those minutes. So they ended up losing. Yeah, what a, what a day. What a day for the NBA world, man. And hopefully tomorrow's a bit better. I would have wished that my Bulls got to got to play today. Whatever. They flew. Think about this, y'all. First of all, I hate flying for reference. So I have to fly a decent amount because of work and projects. Like even on, on Wednesday today, on Wednesday this week, I'm flying to Atlanta for a shoot. I hate flying. And I know NBA job, you on 40 flights a year. It's just, it's just the nature of it. But flying from Chicago to Tampa Bay, Florida, and then getting there and, and finding out all oh, my game is canceled and having to fly right back because they have a game in Chicago tomorrow. I'd be I'd be exhausted. That's all I really say. All right, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. I'll see y'all soon. Call game.